Welcome to the tutorial number 21 of the series Visual Effects for Games and today we are going to see how to create lightning. There are mainly three ways we can do this. The first method is by using the noise and trails features of the particle system inside Unity to create something like this. This one is fairly easy. The other one is by going to Photoshop or GIMP and start creating one or two textures similar to this one. This one is a bit hard since you will require some skill to do it. And the last one is by using After Effects to create a sprite sheet like this one, which is fairly easy, but you require After Effects after all. Alright, so let's see how we can create lightning with these three methods. Alright, so let's start by creating the simplest one, which is the noise and trails. And for that we can create a particle system. I'm going to rename it to lightning noise and trail. I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees. And the first thing we want to do is reduce the start lifetime since lightning is something very fast and something between 0.4 and 0.6 is enough. You can make it even quicker if you want. And in emission I'm going to use one in the rate over time which means one particle each second. Now the start speed it really depends on your scene, on the size of your scene. My scene is a little bit too big and I'm gonna set values between 100 and 150, maybe even more. And for the start size we actually want something very small, since we are going to use trails and we can control the size in the wide over tail. But as you can see we have a warning here saying that we need to assign a trail material. and. We can keep going on with the default particle, so you simply need to drag to the trail material. And you can also increase the max particle size, so when you get closer it doesn't shrink. Now, like I was saying, we can increase the size of our trail by pushing the values of wide over tail to between 2 and 8. And the next thing we are going to need is the noise. The noise is where we control how spiky our lightning is going to be. and we can set the frequency of 10, which is basically scaling up the noise pattern, and then we can increase the strength values to create contrast. And we start to see already some lightning. You can also increase the scroll speed, and if you want even more details, you can set the octaves to 4 and the octave scale to higher values, as well as the multiplier. And as you can see, this is the core concept of how we can make lightning with noise and trail. To improve this just a little bit, we can use a gradient for the color of a lifetime, similar to this one. For those who don't know, the keys on top control the opacity and the keys at the bottom controls the color. So you can create something similar to this and this will basically make the thunder or the lightning flash. Next thing we can do is give some start color to our lightning. And I'm gonna use some purple and pinkish color, something like this. By the way, let's increase the wide over tail. We want some bigger lightning, something like this, which I think looks much better. And I really recommend that you play with the noise module. You can create some cool effects and improve your lightning. Let's just turn on collisions and set the type to world. And now we need to set the bounce to zero and dampen to one so the particles don't bounce. And with the collision on, we can use sub emitters to make sure that when the particles hit the ground, they will spawn some sparks. So let's create those sparks. Let's duplicate this particle system. And we don't need noise, collision, sub emitters or trails. We can turn this off. But we need shape. So let's turn on shape and set the shape to cone. And the radius has to be set to 0.1 in my case. Maybe in your case it's smaller. And then we need to decrease the start speed to around 2 and 8. Let's also rotate this to minus 90 degrees in the X and push this down until it's close to the ground. And the sparks need to be a little bit bigger, so let's increase the start size to be around 0.05 and 0.2. We just need to go to the emission and we don't want to use rate over time, we want to use one burst which will spawn between 5 and 15 sparks. Alright, so we are starting to see something. Let's go to the renderer and change the render mode to stretch at billboard with a speed scale around 0.05 or even more. What this will do, it will basically stretch our particles and they will look like sparks. 
and this is pretty much done. All we need to do now is go to the gravity modifier and set a random number between 0 and 0 0.6. And increase the start lifetime. Now let's select our lighting particle system and in the sub emitters we can select collision, if you haven't already selected, and drag and drop the spark to this slot. Unity asks us if you want to reparent this to the lightning and we can say yes. Now each time a lightning hits the ground, it will spawn a spark, which is quite awesome. And now let's see how we can do this with Photoshop. So in Photoshop or GIMP, we can create a new file with 500 by 1000, create a new layer with Ctrl Shift N, paint the background to black. Now, I can't go into too much details, but I can help you by saying that the breakdown process of drawing a lightning is composed of three simple phases, at least for me. The first phase is with a big brush, with an opacity of around 20, we start creating the shape of the lightning. Something like this, as you can see. And it doesn't need to be something very accurate or too strict. Remember, this is a lightning. It has some very bumpy spikes. The second phase now is with a, a slightly smaller brush, we can start creating some details. And then the last phase is with a very thin and small brush, with an opacity of around 40, create really small details. And the last thing you can do, which has nothing to do with the drawing phase, is accessing the layer style by double clicking in the layer, is turning on outer glow, change it to white and increase the size. That's the very basic way of how I created a lightning texture. Now, once we have done, we can export that as a PNG to Unity. In Unity, let's create a particle system. I'm gonna rename it to Lightning Photoshop. And you can create a new material with shader set to particles additive. Drag the text that you have just created and drag the material to the particle system. Now in the particle system, the first thing we want to do is set the start speed to zero. We don't want this to move. And in the emission, the rate over time, you can set it to one particle each second, just to see how this is looking. And now we have to turn on 3D size to control the size of our texture. So basically it's going to be random between 30 and 10 in X and in the Y it's going to be random between 60 and 50. The Y in my case represents how tall the lightning is going to be since I have rotated 90 degrees in the X. Now let's go to the renderer because our anchor as you can see it's in the middle of our texture and in the pivot we can put it in the beginning or the opposite, it's up to you. Now let's make sure that start lifetime is really small, like we have done before. And in the 3D start rotation, we can make it random between 0 and 360 degrees in the Y axis. Now let's turn on color over lifetime and we can use the similar gradient to the one we have used. And this is basically done, there are a few ways we can improve this by using the sparks we have created before, or by using a beam of light that we'll show you in just a few moments. And for the last method, we can use After Effects to create something similar to this. Alright, so in the project panel, let's create a new composition. I'm gonna rename it to Electricity 008, in my case. And the white can be 500 by 1000. Frame rate is going to be 25 and the duration is going to be only one second. And now we need to select the pen tool, this icon right here. And in the top of our composition, in the middle, we can create one point and then try to create a zigzag like this one. And as you can see we have some weird line. This is because we have fill and we can remove the fill by going down here. We can simply select the fill and press delete. Alright, so now we have this line, and right here, to the right, we can search in the effects and presets for turbulent displays, and drag and drop on top of the shape. And as you can see, it starts already to displace our line, and we can control the amount of displays in the amount parameter, and the complexity amount is going to create more complexity, as you can see. And if you press play with spacebar, 
this is not animated and we can easily animate that by holding alt and pressing in this clock near the evolution just like this and down here we can just type time multiplied by 360 and now it's animated but if you look closely you will notice that this is not looping and this happens because in the evolution options we have to turn on cycle evolution and set the cycle to 1 and now it's looping all right and the next step here is to increase the complexity to around 5, 6, it really depends on what you want to achieve here. There is also another trick. If you go to the stroke in shape, you will notice that here you can control how thick or how thin our lightning is going to be. And now we can animate this by setting 5 at the beginning and around the 5th frame we can increase this to 10 and in the frame 20. We can say it's going to be 10 and in the last frame we can again set it to 5. And if you want in the middle you can set it to 5, it will make it more thick and more thin along the animation. And now I'm going to adjust the complexity and the amount, just like this, until I think it looks good. And the next thing we want to do is add a glow by searching in the effects and presets search bar and drag on top of the shape. Let's increase the glow radius and the intensity just like this. And if you want you can give it an extra glow by duplicating the glow with Ctrl D until you end up with some cool glow lightning just like this. Now the last thing we want to do is to export this and we can go to file and in export select add to render queue. Now let's click down here in the output model and in the format let's select PNG sequence and make sure that in the channels we select RGB plus alpha and press OK. Now the output we can select a place where this is going to export and you can see down here that it will create a folder for you. Once it is exported you can create a sprite sheet with this software or with another one, there are plenty more softwares that will create a sprite sheet or an atlas for you. And we want to create an atlas or a sprite sheet with 5x5. After you have done so, if you want you can reduce the size in Photoshop, it's really up to you. But then we want to import this to Unity. In Unity we want to create a particle system, I'm gonna rename it to Lightning, place it in the right position and with the right rotation. Create a new material and change the shader to Particles Additive. Now we can drag and drop the sprite sheet that we have created. And now we only need to turn on Texture Sheet Animations. Set the tiles to be 5x5, which is the size of our sprite sheet. And we don't want any start speed, so let's set it to 0. And the emission is also going to be zero because we want a burst with only one particle. So let's set the start lifetime to be one for now. All right, so this is really small and let's turn on 3D start size so we can control the size of this between 15 and 25 for the X and 60 for the Y. Of course, this depends on the size of your scene as you know it. This is still a little bit too slow. So let's decrease the start lifetime. And as you may notice, the pivot of our lightning is in the middle. And to fix this, we can go to render. And you either put the pivot at the top or at the bottom. I'm gonna put it at the bottom. Since this will allow us to spawn beam of light sparks in the ground and give the illusion that the lightning is hitting the floor. Because as opposed to the noise and trail particle system, we don't have any particle that is moving throughout space. So basically, Unity doesn't know when this particle hits the ground. And now if you want, you can turn on 3D Start Rotation and make it run up between 360 and 0 in the Y axis. And this is basically done. If you want to make this effect an area, you can go to Shape and set it to a box. Just like this. And by the way, we also want to use the color of a lifetime with this grain that we have uh, already used it before. And now let's create a new particle system which is going to be our beam of light. 
You can also use it in the other particle system that we have used. And the start speed is going to be zero. We also don't need any shape. And we want a burst between one and two with a rate of a time of zero. And the start lifetime is also going to be more or less the same as the lightning. Because this will flash. This is basically a flash. You can change the start colors to something like this. Similar to this with some low opacity. And we also want to use size over lifetime with a curve that goes from big to small. Now if you go to the lightning particle system in the sub emitters model, you can turn that on and basically drag and drop our beam of light to this slot. Unity asks us if you want to repair it, we can say yes. And now each time a lightning hits the ground, or at least it seems like it hits the ground, we see some beam of light at the bottom. Let's just improve this by duplicating the beam of light, rename it to flash light. I'm going to add already to the sub emitter of the lightning. And in the flashlight we'd want to make some small changes. Like for instance increase the marks particle size to 3 and set the pivot to be a little bit higher like this. So it will basically spawn on top of the lightning. And we really need to increase the start size of this to some big values like 80 or 100 or even more. And you have to adjust the pivot again. And that's it. Now if you select lightning and press play, you can see that we have a beam of light at the top and at the bottom. This flashlight, we have to decrease the burst count of our flashlight to 1, make it bigger and decrease also the start color opacity, by the way. And now it looks much better. And if you want, you can add this to the other lightnings that you have created. The lightning with noise trail and the lightning with the Photoshop. And it will improve a lot. You can also add some sparks to this lightning and you can end up with something like this. So this is basically it for this tutorial guys, I hope you have enjoyed it. If you can please support me on my Patreon page, you can find a lot of visual effects for games. There are some cool stuff there. I wanna say thank you to all the patrons who are supporting me, you are amazing guys. In the next tutorial we are going to talk about performance of particle systems and effects in games. I'm gonna give you some cool tips that I have learned along the way. And I hope you have enjoyed, subscribe for weekly game development tutorials and see you in the next video.